Do you know what faults you can commit in badminton? I'm going to tell you all about them so that you can settle any doubts you may have on the court. Hi, I'm Coach Kenny Asuncion and I've been a professional badminton coach for many years. I want to help you improve your game through my videos which discuss different aspects of the sport. One thing that sometimes causes some problems on the badminton court is the matter of faults. Some players even end up arguing because they can't decide on whether something is a fault or not. In this video, I'm going to discuss these faults so as to avoid disputes when you are playing. So, for service fault, definitely putting the head of your racket above is definitely fault for service. It is not like tennis that you throw the ball and then you hit and swing for the serve. For badminton, normally the grip is slightly higher than the head of the racket. So if the head is way too high and you serve this way, that is considered fall. Okay? Even for a backhand serve, you will notice that the head of the racket is below. With regards to your foot upon serving, it should be both grounded on the floor. So if you do a forehand serve, it's okay to lift the heel slightly up but still keeping your toes touching the ground. Once you lift your foot upon contact of the serve, that is considered fault. This is fault. Okay, so both feet should somehow be still touching the ground. So the most you can do is slightly lift your heel from the back. Now if you're doing the backhand serve, all the more, both feet should be flat on the ground as you do the serve. You can slightly lift your heel up, but that's it. So you have to stay grounded. You can't even drag your feet. Once you drag your feet, that's also considered moving and it's a fault for the serve. Another fault would be double touching the shuttle before actually hitting it to serve. So for example, I'm going to be serving on my forehand serve. I cannot do this and then let go because that's considered two touches on the head of my racket, on the strings. Same with the backhand serve. You cannot do this and then serve. That is already multiple hitting of the shuttle without actually releasing it. So it has to go in one swing immediately one movement. Many would ask what happens if your serve, your shuttle touches the net? Is it a fall? Well, if it touches the net but goes over and goes in the designated box, then that is considered in. If it doesn't go in the designated box, then it's simple. It's out or maybe a wrong court. Okay? So every time you serve, from your left side box to the diagonal left side, even if the shuttle slightly touches the net, that's fine as long as it goes over the net. It is also considered a fault when you serve and you are slightly stepping on the line. Whether it's very minimal or very big, it will be fault when the service judge sees it. So whether it's here in the middle or here in front, avoid stepping on the line. It goes the same with receiving the serve. You will see that many international players are very close to the front waiting for a serve, but they do not step on the lines. So do not step on the lines for service and receiving. When serving, you will definitely have to hit the court first as opposed to the feathers. So when you serve forehand or when you serve the backhand serve, the court should be the one in contact with your racket first upon hitting it. Second, a miss hit or missing the serve. For example, I serve, for example, I serve and I drop it, I missed it, it's already fall on my side. You cannot redo or repeat that serve. Automatically, your opponent gets the point. During rally, what is considered a fault? Definitely 
having your racket over the net while the shuttle is still ongoing would be considered a fault. Sometimes players move really fast and they anticipate it well. But do take note that you have to wait for the shuttle to come to the side of your court before actually hitting it. If the shuttle is still on the other side and, you, and your racket goes over the net to hit it, that is considered fault. Another thing that would be considered fault is when you touch the net with your racket or touch the net with your body while the game is ongoing. It can happen sometimes because we kind of lose our balance and we kind of touch the net, especially in doubles. It happens more in doubles. However, if your foot slightly goes over to the other side of the court, it should be fine according to the PWF rules as long as you are not distracting your opponent. Okay, so that is kind of a tricky thing. So it will all depend on the umpire if they will call it or not. So most likely, it's their discretion if you're trying to distract your opponent moving your foot over to the other side of the net. Otherwise, it is fine. Okay? So be very, very careful when hitting, especially close to the net. Pretty much like the serve, double hitting is definitely a fault when the rally is ongoing. So if you double hit it before it goes to the other side, automatically the opponent gets the point. If you and your partner both hit it, you know, one time each, that is still considered a fault. Because sometimes as partners, both of you want to take the shot, maybe a, one partner would uh, accidentally touch it and the other one hits it back, that is already considered a double touch and a ball. Now, another thing also is that when it touches the clothing of our body before we actually get to hit it, okay? This is very tricky. Again, it will all depend on what the umpire sees while the, while the game is ongoing. So if it suddenly touches your body, your you know your garments, and then you still hit it back. It can be called a fault. Some misconduct faults would be distracting your opponent. For example, I am playing, and I could be playing singles or I could be playing doubles. I cannot trash talk. I cannot distract my opponent. Like before they hit, I will actually shout, "Huh." or distracting them in any way. So you cannot distract your opponent while the game is ongoing. You cannot shout, you know, things or say things that is inappropriate for the game. So when the rally is ongoing, best thing to do is just to focus on your gameplay. Doing inappropriate gestures such as flipping the bird or doing the bad sign or purposely shouting profanities towards your opponent is considered a fault. Repeated offense such as shouting at your opponent or anything that your umpire calls on you to ask you not to do and you've repeatedly done it, the umpire is allowed to first verbally warn you but if you keep doing the same act, they can give you a yellow card. So what is a yellow card? A yellow card means a very firm warning. That's the last warning. And after that, you can be given a red card. A red card would mean an automatic point for your opponent. So maximum of two red cards can be given to a player before they actually give the black card. So what is the black card? The black card disqualifies you from the game. So do watch out and do watch out for the warnings of your umpires and make sure you do listen to them. To learn more about the rules of badminton, click on the videos on your screen and make sure to catch my next video so you can level up your game and be the next smashing success.